Welcome back to Objectively Grading, the only show on YouTube that grades things. Don't look it up, please. Today is August 25th, and I love bleach, and not just the beverage either. I've been a fan of bleach probably since uh, our early Shonen Jump, whenever it was first being published. I don't remember exactly when I got into it, what arc. I'm mostly sure it was the uh, Soul Society Invasion arc, but I, 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 can't, I can't be too sure. It was a while ago. But one of the things that always stuck with me, as far as Bleach is concerned, is their power system. Not just how, like, nonsense overpowered everything becomes, because it does, but the concept of Shikai and Bankai and the transforming weapons, reflections of the soul, weapon eyes, like, that's all a very neat and interesting concept. And so I want to talk about Bankai, because they get crazy. With that in mind, let's go into the criteria at which each Bankai is being graded. First, grandeur. And by that, I simply mean if I look at that Bankai, if I see it with my eyes, do I go, oh, that's a last boss power-up? Or do I go, oh, well, he's got another form, huh? That may come off as a weird one to pick from, but they've specifically stated that Bankai, at the very least, present a certain level of power. Because they multiply the Soul Reaper's power by 10, by a factor of 10. So it needs to have some level of grandeur or scale, even if the base form is not that particularly grand. Second, efficacy. This is going to be a common one on the channel, I feel like. But simply, how good does the Bankai do? On, on a scale of 1 to 10, how useful was it when the Bankai shows up? Is it capable of doing large amounts of damage, taking out important enemies... Or does it just kind of uh, get its ass beat every single time it's on screen? Or have a very moderate showcasing of abilities? And lastly, we have the theme. Does the Bankai follow the theme of both the character and the Shikai that came before it? This is important specifically because with Bankai, they are supposed to be a magnification of the soul. Therefore, it should reflect the person using it to some extent. It should also evolve upon the Shikai, as opposed to just doing the same thing, simply because the Bankai is meant to be a direct evolution of the Shikai. It's even in, it's in the name, it's right there, I should, I don't, yeah. Some assumptions before we begin. We're talking canon Bankai, for canon characters. So no filler Bankai and no filler characters, I just didn't feel like dealing with it. I, 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 I just didn't. Two. The Bankai have been revealed, not just referenced, to having been achieved off-screen. This almost cuts out a couple of them near the end, but we'll get there and I'll explain why they're still in it whenever we get there. And number three, if the Bankai has multiple identifiable forms that exist with either additional names or different names, or... Due to story events, they are definitely different weapons or different Bankai, as opposed to just being... This is getting wordy. Basically, if the Bankai is very, very obviously a new thing and not just a different form, it gets a new entry. God, that was hard to get out. There is one that is a little, uh, uh, iffy in that category, and I will, uh, let you know whenever we get there that I'm aware that I am being a bit of a hypocrite. Make sure to subscribe, because I like having you guys around. It's fun. It makes, it makes, it, it validates the amount of stupid nonsense that runs through my brain every single day. I'm gonna be one of those people that comes out and says, I think Tensa Zangetsu suffers from overexposure. Whenever it's first introduced, there's this huge deal made about it and how powerful it was supposed to make Ichigo. Its speed made him blindingly quick when compared to other Shinigami, to the point where he could have killed Byakuya right out the get, but he chose not to because he's a good guy. Unfortunately, I believe that right then and there, his Bankai peaked. It was the very first fight that it was revealed, and then from then on, after that, it just became kind of the only way we saw Ichigo fight for any extended period of time. This wouldn't necessarily be a problem, because we had seen him fight in his Shikai for a while, you know? Like, if he had significantly altered his moveset, or fought in a way that was tremendously different, it would have made up for it. But other than, like, his after-image flash step thing, I mean, I, other than that, he's got nothing other than a color change and a jacket. Not to mention the fact that we see him so much that every new big bad has to fight Ichigo right out the get. 
and they beat his ass every time. He can be in Bankai all he wants, and he still gets stomped into the ground. Because they have to show off how powerful they are, and then Ichigo has to use his visored mask. And that's his real Bankai, essentially. The only saving grace for the Bankai is the fact that it does represent Ichigo gaining better control of his Shinigami abilities. It allows him to compress his spiritual pressure into a smaller blade, which is something he has not been able to do up until this point. This would make an even cooler concept if the blade itself showed any particular resilience or strength from being so much so condensed powerful spiritual pressure, but it never does. It just seems like a sword. So, for grandeur, we're gonna give it a- give, 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 For grandeur, we're gonna give it a three. Because it's not very grand, but the red and black color scheme, combined with some pretty impressive looking Getsuga Ten shows throughout the show, you know, it's- it's aight. Uh, efficacy though, that's a two. I- I don't think it ever wins. Even in its first showing, the Bankai's very first showing is against Byakuya. And he loses that fight. And I know people are gonna be like, Yeah, no, he wins that fight! He had to get help from his inner hollow. The hollow mask is the true bomb guy, and I stand by that, so this gets a two. Thematically, it's a four, mostly because it doesn't really fulfill much of a fantasy, because Ichigo still has a lot of growing to do over the course of the series, but it doesn't really do much with the concept that it presents. Combined, that gives it a nine out of a possible 30. It's unfortunate. That's a fortunate way to start. But we're gonna go to his second Bankai, because I like it a lot more. Ichigo's second Bankai is a significant improvement over his first, in a lot of ways. Um, even though it is kind of just another sword, it also visibly alters him and creates some reference to the fact that he's mastered more sides of himself and more being- like, more parts of his being. Also, whenever it is revealed for the first time, or when he's forging it, the power is implied to be tremendous. The- the implications of power are what really set this one apart from the other one. Um, this one is implied to be so powerful that it is literally never used because... Yavehawk, Yavok, Yancey. So Yancey has the ability to see into the future and destroy all possible timelines that he chooses, by this point in the story at least. And he goes into the timeline where Ichigo's Bankai is broken, and he breaks it by pulling that into our timeline, or something like that. It's god bullshit. The point that I'm trying to make is that this character who has this ability still needed to actually break Ichigo's Bankai through hacks than to actually fight it because he would lose. And thematically, it also fits in really well with Ichigo up until this point. His Shikai now, or his, his Zanpakuto rather, is two swords, and they come together to form one. And in doing so, it's not just two forms that are coming together, it is two halves of himself, his mother and his father. The human Quincy, hollow, Shinigami combination all finally coalesces into this one being, and they're all finally working together. But again, it just kind of puts that all on a sword. It's a better message than the previous, but it's not, it's not that, that crazy, you know? For grandeur, it gets a five, because it's kind of a sword, and just kind of a sword. It's a powerful sword. But it is just kind of a sword. But it does give him horns and a cool eye, though, so it, it's a little bit better than before, at least, right? Effic eff 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 efficacy. We get an implied 8 out of 10, and I'm going to stick with the implication here. If I were to see it in combat, and it were to be as powerful as this is making it out to be, it would be a 10 out of 10, obviously. But we never see it. We never really get to see it. He uses it one time. That's it. That's all we get. And maybe it's changed with the, the Hell arc that's currently going on. I don't think it has, though. But either way, since we don't see it, it's an 8. And thematically, we're also going to give it an 8. It is an improvement over the last one's theme. It evolves the concept of the previous Bankai, as well as the concept of the Shikai that it possesses before transforming into Bankai. That gives it a total of 21 out of a possible 30, which is much better. That's Lieutenant Abarai! <sighs> Lieutenant Abarai! Sir, are you alright? Hihio Zabimaru. I'm from- I'm from the south, just bear with me. Hihio Zabimaru. Bankai Zabimaru is... good, um, at first. Whenever it's first revealed, it's shown to be like this crazy cool-looking giant bone snake with Rietsu that combines and holds together the whole thing that it can do crazy shit with. Like, it's- it's a wild-looking thing. Uh, and then it gets beaten. And then it gets beaten again. Then it beats a Frasion, and uh, then it gets beaten again. 
Within the context of the story of Bleach and how by the end of it it's kind of revealed that Renji's uh, Zanpak Toe spirit was purposefully not giving him the right name because he didn't have Renji's full respect yet, makes sense that it loses a lot and it's not really that good. For most of the series, we don't know this. And for most of the series, this is probably not true. This is probably an idea that Tight Kubo had uh, way later to explain why Renji sucks now, which is why they overcompensate in a little bit, but we'll get there. It also doesn't really have much in the way of attacks. It can, like, do that. It can, it can body slam them. Um, it can bite, and it can shoot a laser out of its mouth. Pretty much it. I mean, it, uh, it can attack with different parts of its body too, but like, how effective is that when compared to the bite or the, the, the laser beam? Thematically, we're gonna give it like a retroactive 6 out of 10. Before, it was just kind of, uh, the same thing as Ishikai, but, you know, it, it hit him. It was like, BAM! Instead of dragging him. Um, but other than that, it, it wasn't much different. But the concept of it actually being nerfed by his Zompok Toe Spirit, specifically so Renji could earn the respect, that's a good, that's good. That's a good retroactive theme. If that had been kind of the actual theme throughout the whole series, like, we knew it ahead of time that he had to earn the Zompok Toe's full trust to gain the full power. Really, that's a neat concept in general that they don't explore enough. It happens to Yumichika and Renji. Nobody else really does anything with the names of their Zanpak Toe to alter them in some way. I feel like that's something that, that I'm ranting here, but hang on. I feel like that's something that Kimpachi would do, you know? Like, he would nerf his Bankai because he doesn't want the fight to end, but it would also reduce the power of his rage. Off topic, let's get to Renji's scores. Grandeur, he gets a 7 out of 10, because it's a big freaking bone snake, and it's really cool. It just doesn't do a lot once it's there. For efficacy, uh, I, I wanna, I, I wanna give it less than a 4, but I'm gonna give it a 4, because it tends to, to make Renji do better than he would otherwise. Uh, Renji is famously good at getting his butt whipped, but when he pulls out his Bankai, he tends to make a nice recovery for a little while. It clearly does something, it's just not good enough. And thematically, again, retroactive 6. I, I, I spoiled the score early on this one, but I wanted to rant. That's a 17. But then we get to the other one. Suzabimaru is uh, a mixed bag. On one hand, on one hand, it is better to me, in most regards, than his, uh, previous, uh, Bankai, Hihio. But, it's so much smaller, it's such a little guy! Like, it's so, it's, it's itty-bitty. Um, and the attacks don't really lend a whole lot to it whenever I'm looking at it. It just looks like it could be another weapon. But then, you know, it breaks the scaling of the entire series by one-shotting a bullshit enemy, because Renji has done nothing but lose up until this point, so... But I, I, and I mean that seriously, um, if the power scaling made more sense with it, I wouldn't have much of a problem. But Renji was already basically, like, at the power level he was probably gonna be at. His Zanpak Toe changing would have improved tremendously his level of power from what it was to maybe, you know, 10 or 15 times more. But Renji, I don't think, should be that powerful. But it does go back and revisit his Shikai's, you know, theme. But they're very he heavy-handed with this. They're like, you just been using it to push him away when you can be using it to pull him. And it's like, its ability pulls you and snaps closed. Like, it's... Yeah, it's there, it's good, I got it. Like, you, you hold things close now, and you don't let go. Uh, which is very true for Renji. So it's not bad, I just wish they weren't... beat you over the head with it. They didn't spell it out like they do. So Grander, it's a 6 out of 10. Uh, because it's still got, like, the, the, the bite, like, it's like, Ow! and it, 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 it eats them. And that's cool. That's, I, that's a cool ability. Like, that, that, that alone, and it's a cool weapon. Efficacy gets a 9. And it's only, again, not getting a 10 because we don't see it used more, as well as the fact that it doesn't really make sense in the grand scheme of power scaling. And thematically, we're gonna give it a 7. For the reasons I had just talked about. That's a 22 out of 30. Next fight still misses me, but her aim is getting better! Minazuki is disappointing. The actual fights that Unohana is in when she's using Minazuki, uh, I say fights, the fight against Kenpachi is beautiful. It's a well-animated shot. It's it's nice in the manga to look at. But Minazuki itself is just red goo. Uh, it's blood acid. Uh, it looks it's it's kind of metal, but it's just it's just a lot of acid. Uh, it doesn't 
change the blade. It makes her scary. It makes Unahana very scary. It doesn't look like it would be an ultimate attack, which is kind of what makes it a, such an effective ultimate attack, really. But I want it to be bombastic. It needs to be bombastic in order to fall under the category of a true mm, bullshit overpowered Bonkai. Unless, of course, that is part of their soul to uh, conceal. Unohana never concealed anything. Everyone knew everything. She just sh didn't show it on screen. But uh, it is it is insanely powerful. We do have to talk about that. That could be because Unohana herself is is probably a hax. Like, she is, uh, by the data book's description, stronger than everybody but the captain commander. So it, its efficacy cannot be, cannot be undersold. Especially because of the fact that Kimpachi was already insanely powerful before this fight with Unohana, and she one-shots him. I mean, it's cra- like, um, I don't, however, think it evolves Unohana in any way, and while changing the kanji of the Shikai to change the meaning of the word Minazuki, that's- that's neat, that's cool, I like that. But Minazuki is so vastly different between Shikai and Bankai, it doesn't really make sense. Maybe, maybe someone else can explain it to me. Maybe it has something to do with, like, Japanese folklore or something. But I got nothing for it. Uh, it's, it's not very good. So for Grandeur, we're gonna give it a 6 out of a possible 10. 6 mostly for the way that the only panels with it in it are all pretty incredible. They're pretty solid stuff. Um, it's just, it itself is not a crazy ability. Uh, or, obviously, Bankai ability. Efficacy, though, is another 9 out of 10. Um... I want to give it more, I do, but I don't think we can truly call something a, a, a 10 out of 10 if you can just look at it and walk, kind of walk away from it. <laughs> the only reason it's as effective as it is in the story is because it's inside. She chose the battleground. And thematically, it's a 3 out of 10 unless somebody gives me some information otherwise. Because, uh, I, I got nothing. It makes no sense to me. It's an 18 out of a possible 30. Speaking of Kimpachi, though, let's talk about Nozarashi. Wait. Um, we're gonna be calling the Bankai Yachirizu Nozurashi for the sake of not confusing Nozurashi with the Shikai form. Um, but Yachiru, 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 Yachiru is good. Um, it fits Kimpachi very well. But it is not big, it's not bombastic. Again, mostly fitting Kimpachi. Kimpachi is only big and bombastic because he's insanely powerful. He does nothing really that fancy. He just hits things with his sword. And uh, him going and turning into an Oni with like a little cleaver from his Shikai that he broke, that's pretty, that's pretty dope. Like, that's a good concept. Um, but other than his like crazy physical strength while he's in this form and kind of the instant like, ooh, his skin's red and his eyes are all white. There's not much to look at on this Bankai, and it's not even that good of a Bankai. If it wasn't Kimpachi who had the Bankai, it would not be a good Bankai. Because all it does is increase your physical strength and physical attributes. It clearly wipes your mind. And I know this is a reflection of Kim Kimpachi specifically, so nobody else could have it. But it also still destroys Kimpachi's body to use it, right now at least. And this is the only way we've been shown that it exists. His body can't even contain the smallest portion of his Bankai that the Bankai thought to give him. But of course, thematically, it's it's one of the most solid out there. It is essentially a manifestation of who Kimpachi truly sees himself as, and who he feels he has become and wants to be. But more than that, we get this idea of Yachiru's how she deeply cares for him and and truly believes that Kenny is like her 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 soulmate because they are that yeah, literally like like not in a weird way not in a gross way but like that is the person that she wants to be next to forever that Yachiru truly believed Kimpachi to be stronger which means that Kimpachi almost certainly still has mental blocks built in a little a little too nuts but it's Kimpachi he's meant to be ridiculous so, on the scales, Grandeur gets a 5 out of a possible 10. It's... he's just red. He, he's just red. Uh, efficacy, it, it's also gonna get a 5. He does hurt Gerard tremendously. Like, he does a lot of damage to Gerard Valkyrie, but Gerard is a god character. Uh, he cannot be beaten. Anybody other than Kimpachi who had it would immediately be 
useless because their most of their skills would not come into play because they're in a berserker state. And it's only physical attacks anyway. Thematically, though, it's a 10 out of 10. I went into that enough. So total 20 out of a possible 30. Since we're in squad 11, we need to talk about Ikaku. <laughs> Ryumon Hozokimaru. Also disappointing... Because it's revealed out of nowhere. Nobody has any clue that this is a thing that can even happen. And then he just pops it out and uses it against the Prashion. And we're just like, whoa, that's awesome! Until it's ever mentioned ever again. Because it's not a good Bankai at all. It looks cool. It's got a great reveal. But all it does is make him hit harder. And then it doesn't shield itself really. And a Prashion manages to break it. It's, it's not good. It's a solid not good. <laughs> Like, that's, a, that's an Anthony Fantano not good right there. Which is really, really unfortunate to say because it fits Ikaku perfectly. It tests its opponent's strength before it can come out with its full strength. Um, once it's broken, it's never really used again. Neither is Ikaku once the Bankai is broken. Um, it also tends to actually just focus entirely on physical strength, even though it probably has knowledge of other strengths, it just chooses not to use them. It's really good for Ikaku, it's just a fairly weak, disappointing Bankai that he won't even use. It's not a good, it's not a good way to become a captain just to have a Bankai. You, you probably stay third seat, my man. Renji's still a lieutenant, you can still be a third seat, just show him what you got. Grander's a 5 out of 10 for that first reveal, and only the first reveal. Everything after that is, like, nothing, but that first reveal's good. Efficacy gets a, it gets a 2. Uh, it only ever beats a Frasion, and it only ever does that, uh, because... Just, he got lucky, basically. <laughs> but thematically, it's a solid 8 out of a possible 10. That brings his total up to 15 out of 30. Get ready for the next battle, battle, battle. Tekken Tachikaze. <laughs> I know that word. It's, it's amazing to me how disappointing the last couple are. Uh, the, all the, the purely physical Zanbakuto, I, I understand if you like them. But when you compare them to what some of the, the other options a little later on can do whenever they go into Bankai, purely physical Zanbakuto need to do more. <laughs> and Kensei, it's, it's close. It's very close to being able to do more because it just causes consistent explosions uh, whenever his fists are connected to whoever it is that he's hit. It makes them explode thousands or hundreds or dozens, it doesn't really specify, uh, a large number of times as long as the knuckles are connected. If these were like real explosions, that'd be cool. That'd be really cool looking. They're green explosions, which is still fine. That's it. That's all they do. His, his Shikai had more than that. But this only has one technique, one move, and it's to punch him. It's just like armor on his shoulders and arms and like gauntlets. Like it's one full piece. Like you'll see what I mean in the in the picture. And it doesn't do anything on its own whenever it's like powering up. It doesn't glow. Uh, it doesn't come apart to reveal a more powerful thing. There's nothing extra to it other than this this piece of armor. It also never wins. I think it might. I think it might win, but not not permanently. Not in any way that matters. He never beats anybody with it that actually is a threat. As far as Tekken Tachikaze goes, for Kensei though, it fits him fine. Um, it stays compact in size, which fits Kensei's personality. Uh, and his Shikai. His Shikai was just a combat knife. It also is a very physically direct kind of weapon, which is obviously what Kensei favors. But Grandeur is going to get a 4. Because it's not grand at all. Efficacy gets a 3. Because it does nothing. In theory, it would be devastating, but it, it does nothing. It, <laughs> you know, it just, he, he needs to pick his fights better. And thematically, it gets a 5. And I want to mention, um, I wish we could have seen this Bankai while he had his hollow mask on. I don't know if they ever explained why none of the Visor had ever used their masks during the Thousand Year Blood War, but he should have used his, and maybe... Maybe it could have been revealed, but that would have just been the visor mask being the real Bankai, just like with Ichigo. So, thematically, it's, it's a 5. So that gives him a 12 out of possible 30. I'm gonna butcher this one. Katen Kyokatsu Karamaku Shinju. You should take that up with Captain Kyoraku, <gasps> since he was the one who insisted I buy you something sexy. I tried it on the This is a weird one. It's probably one of the strangest Bankai over the course of the entire series, uh, which makes a lot of sense given that the Shikai is also one of the strangest Shikai's over the course of the entire series. 
It's difficult to talk about with just saying, without just, just like, describing the actual Bankai itself. Because there isn't a weapon. There isn't anything that happens to Kyoraku while he's doing it. He's just there. He's a participant. But it is a play. It is a, a play that whoever is in the area is forced to take part in. It has multiple acts, which ends with the insta-killing of the opponent in question. Uh, it harms Shunsoi as well, Kyoraku. Kyo Kyoraku, I'm going to say Shunsoi. It harms him as well, I do believe. And he can't really control if you're caught in it or not. If you're in the AoE, you're in the AoE. Uh, the activation conditions, I assume, are him just saying Bankai and then you're in it. Which is nonsense, especially for an instant kill move. Uh, but we only ever see him use it against one guy who has outright stated immortality. So we can't really judge its power, unfortunately. Implied, it's a 10 out of 10. But in, in, in actuality, without having anyone else to scale it on, it's an 8 out of 10 there. Grandeur-wise, it's a 9. Like, it's crazy. It's wild looking. It's a, it's, it's a nuts kind of thing to follow. But thematically, it gets a 7 out of 10. And a lot of people will disagree. A lot of people will say it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because his first one is children's games, his Shikai but then his Bankai is a play. But what is a play, what is theater if not adult gaming? Uh, whenever you don't have like literal video games and computers. You're creating this scenario and allowing your character to be controlled by the script writer. It's very much an adult game. And it makes a lot of sense to me. So it gets a 7 there. Brings his total up to 24 out of a possible 30. And then we have uh, a complicated one. <laughs> Daiguren Hyorenmaru is a mixed, a mixed bag, um, and really, now that I've been thinking about it, I wasn't a fan of Daiguren Hyorenmaru for a very, very long time. Um, it suffers a lot from Ichigo's Bankai Syndrome, which is, it gets overexposed, it gets overused. It is one of the most seen Bankai over the course of the series, but it also is simply a reflection of... Hitsugaya's lack of a maturity. His Bankai is not mature because he is not mature. It ends up going through multiple transformations over the course of the series. And at first, they're smaller. Like, whenever he loses the little petals behind him, because that's as long as he can keep his Bankai active. Once, it's, once he's got a little more mastery over it, those petals disappear. Which is small, but it's a nice little change because it shows that he's grown. He also gains it on his arm, like it grows down his arm. Um, then he gets a holified version during the Thousand Year Blood War. But of course, lastly, he has a form that turns him into an adult for some reason. It gives him very little ice, but it's essentially the opposite of the Captain Commanders, where it drains all the heat. It makes everything colder than hell in front of him. Um, to the point where it is technically absolute zero, which is the, 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 the temperature at which everything, all particles, stop moving, except for spiritual energy, apparently. And the evolution of the Bankai is what makes the Bankai. Because if we're going by the original form of it before this last technique, this, this transformation of his, if we're going by the original, it's bad. But we're going to include all of this into one because it simply refers to that last form as its completed state. That is still the same Bankai, but it is just completed. So Grandeur gets a 6 out of 10 because it can do some really cool stuff. And at least looking at it, you know, on anyone, you'd go, wow, they look like somebody I probably don't want to mess with right now. That's at least a mid-level boss, if not an in-game boss. Like, come on. Efficacy gets an 8 out of a possible 10. Because it has a ton of things it can do, and it's it's the creativity that allows it to do as much as it does, until the very end. Its last phase is just kind of hacks, but we only ever see it against, again, a being who cannot die. Which limits kind of the fun of it, which limits the true scope of the power. 8 out of 10 on the efficacy. And thematically, Hitsugaya has always fit his... Bankai very well. He's always fit his Zanpakuto very well. He's a, a prodigy, a prodigal being who is cold and aloof and literally exudes coldness and cold energy. I do have questions about how every, like, every Zanpakuto is supposed to be a reflection of your soul, but then, uh, Hyorin Maru is stated to, like, reappear. Like, he gets added back to the cycle. Thematically, he's also a 6. And that brings his total up to a 20 out of a possible 30. We're gonna go from one ice to another ice that's twice as nice, and that is Haka no Togame. 
Rukia's Bankai is, is pretty solid, really, um, especially in terms of its reveal and its appearance. It's, it's an elegant-looking thing, because it, it completely changes her outfit into what looks to be essentially like a like an ice statue. It's, it's really, really pretty! Like, it's really pretty! But that's all it does. I've just described both its, its grandeur and its efficacy. If you can't be frozen, or if you can produce enough heat, I assume, uh, you could, you could just not die from it, because she can't move right now, at least when it's revealed over, over in Thousand Year Blood War. She can't move, because her body will shatter from the ice. It's freezing her solid, because of her lack of ability to use it. Eventually, it will be much more powerful, when she can shunpo, and just flash freeze nuke a location, and do that for free. Like, that's nonsense, yes. But she can't do that now. Thematically, that's phenomenal. That's some good stuff. And what I mean is that thematically, she's always been sort of, again, like Hitsugaya, this kind of cold, aloof character that tries really hard at first not to get too close to people and attempts to push them away. She, she's a little sundere. She's a little sundere! <laughs> also, too, being adopted into the Kuchkis means that she is not touchable for most people as well. She's always been kind of this statue that you weren't allowed to interact with. And this shows the reflection of that and how it makes her feel. It makes her feel like if she moves, she's going to break. And that's very neat. That's very cool. <laughs> so for grandeur, we're gonna give it an 8. It's got a hell of a reveal, dude. Um, and its appearance is really, really picturesque. It's, it's really well animated, too. That helps. Um, but even in the manga, even if, if you can't identify that an area is pure white, seeing things that aren't the pure white become pure white and then shatter. Really cool. Really, really good stuff. Uh, efficacy, though, it's a 5. It's a 5 because Rukia has not mastered it and cannot use it without destroying herself. Uh, that's a that's a pretty big drawback right now. That's going to be improved with time, but it's, it's, it's a pretty significant drawback that keeps it from actually obtaining its true power. Thematically, it's a 7 for the reasons I stated earlier. That brings its total to a 20 out of a possible 30. NOT SCIENTIFICALLY POSSIBLE! That, that's a big, that's a, a big lady. Benihime Aratame is neat. It's strange, but it's neat. It's very neat. Grandeur-wise, I don't think any of us expected it. When I look at the, the sword, Benihime, and how it's using blood to create, like, magical blasts. I'm not actually thinking that's blood. I don't think of actual body horror whenever it comes to Benahime. And then Benahime Aratame shows up, and it is uh, body horror the Bankai, which is awesome! And I understand that the blood was thematic to body horror. It just, it just, it just still shocks you. Not saying that, like, it's a bad thing. Not saying it at all like it's a bad thing, because Urahara has this mad scientist energy about him anyway. Ooh, I'm burping. He's got this mad scientist energy about him anyway, so it still fits. Power-wise, I I really don't know how to grade it. Um, again, going against somebody who can literally become immune to death is kind of nonsense, as are most of the enemies by the end of the show slash manga. But against anyone else, I feel like it's an instant win. Against somebody who's not outright immortal, or outright stronger than Urahara in every way, in spiritual pressure, energy, strength, whatever. Urahara could just pop this, and everyone's dead. Anyone's dead. Even if he's at, on his la literal last leg, and he's just like, oh, Bankai, and then he swaps hearts with them, they're dead, man. Like, he, it's gone. He just removed their heart. So it's kind of nonsense. It's just, we only ever see it against one person. We don't know what the limits are. It, it does evolve the, the blood into, like, the full body, uh, it is definitely different than the Shikai is. But really, most of, like, the body horror stuff, that falls under my Yuri's jurisdiction. Kisuke mostly did, like, weird crossbreeding experiments and, and uh, making, like, artificial beings. Which, I guess, would have some, some body horror to it, and Mayuri also dabbles in this. But it doesn't, it doesn't fit Kisuke as well as I feel like it could. So, grander, it's an 8 out of 10. Big lady, big, big, big lady. She's there, and then I don't have my legs anymore. Efficacy's a nine. Same reasons as we've given some other things a nine. And thematically, it's a six, because it's good, but not great. That gives it a 23 out of a possible 30. What the fuck? <laughs> Jakuho Raikoben, which is the Bankai of Soifan. 
is one of the few cases where uh, I think the Shikai is better in nearly every way, but I also still like the Bonkai. A lot of people don't. A lot of people hate this Bonkai, and I totally get it. With Soifan and with Ninja in particular, with Shinobi, at the point that they're discovered and the point that they have to break stealth, they're going to cause as much chaos and disruption as possible in order to escape their situation. Uh, in Soifan's case, she's not just going to escape, she's going to blow you the fuck up. And I get it, I understand how that is an evolution of the assassin. You are trying, you're, you're hail marrying, you're dropping all of your bombs, you're, you're throwing your flashbangs down, you're doing what you have to do to win and survive, because that is the thing that matters the most. It doesn't ever work, though. It never does. The explosion is implied to be so ridiculously overpowered that she has to have a separate thing to keep her from flying away. And she'll be a mile away from the explosion sometimes. But it never kills what it hits. Against uh, Bergen, it didn't even really damage him that badly the first time. I don't think it damaged him at all the first time. And it barely damaged him whenever they tried everything to, like, make it damage him the second time. I want it to be good because it's supposed to be the one-hit kill, too. It's supposed to evolve the Shikai from being a two-hit kill to the Bankai being a one-hit kill. But it, it, it's always not that... <laughs> It's, it never works out that way, which is unfortunate because it could be so much better, and it fits her, and uh, Grandeur, I want to give more, by the way. I want to give this more simply for the sake of the explosion, uh, but it, it but it itself, uh, Jakuho Raikoben is uh, just kind of a big toothpick. Put it in a giant burger, and it would fit fine, but the explosion gives it, you know, a lot of oomph, obviously. So it gets a 7 out of 10. Grandeur, not Grandeur, Efficacy is a 3, though. It never does what it's supposed to do, which is either one-hit kill or get Soifan to safety. It never does either of them. And thematically, it's a 7 out of 10, which is where most people are going to disagree with me. But remember, you're objectively wrong, and it fits because it is that Hail Mary. It's that, I gotta get out of here, I gotta do this, I have to. It is now or never. Press the button, fail safe, let's run. So that brings her total up to a 17 out of a possible 30. Bye-bye! Kamashini no Yari is, uh, Gin. That's Gin's Bankai. And it's very good. It's, it's actually one of the best, like, most well-rounded Bankai in the series, I think. Um, and, and I will explain why I think and why I know. Starting out with Grandeur, it in itself is not grand. It is just his regular sword. It is an untransformed Zanpakuto. And then he levels a city with it so quickly that you don't see the blade ever. All the buildings collapse, and then he reveals how fast it can go, and then it's got like the thing where it's a cylinder of fucking blades, and then it's got venom because it's actually turning to dust, and then going, it's, it's got a lot, both in terms of pure scale, because it's like 11.2 miles long, and then it also goes 500 times the speed of sound. But it's also a, a a lot of really weighty, powerful hits belong to this weapon, and because it's Gin's Bankai, this 11 mile long sword, he can wield like it's nothing. And that's, that's, that's nuts! That's insane! Uh, for distance, like, as scale, like, that, that means nothing in the course of Bleach, because distance is only as long as they want it to be. But in real life, 11 miles would be almost the entire town that I live in. <laughs> that's bananas. And it fits Gin so well. Um, it is, of course, essentially just the same thing as the Shikai, uh, but the Shikai, I think, literally just makes the blade longer. Like, a hundred times longer? Something like that. It doesn't turn it into vapor and have venom. It doesn't move particularly insanely quickly. It's got a lot of power behind it, but it's not unstoppable. It's just a long sword. But with this having the venom and with it being as quick as it is, and you having to be wary at all times against it, it fits the theme of Snake, which is Gin's entire thing. It is his face, it's his personality, it's his nature whenever it comes to fighting. It, he, he's a snake. He's a cold-hearted snake. Look into his eyes. Anyway, he gets sevens across the board because everything is good, everything is solid. Gin's good. He's a good man. He's not, but like, he's not, he's not the worst man. He's like, neutral. He's, he's, he's mostly evil, but he's kind of neutral. 21 out of 30. Jesus Christ, why, why is every old guy super jacked?
Zonka no Tachi, I believe, is the rule of cool of Bankai. Not because it itself is very cool, it's just a sword. But it, it, it is the last technique, which he raises the corpses, the ash, of every single person that has ever been felled by his, I, I think, Zanpakuto, not just Bankai. He raises the corpses of them and makes them attack you. It's not an illusion, like, these are the real, actual corpses, or ashes, at least, of these people presumably. And then to think about the fact that that's not even the primary ability. The primary ability is just the heat that it generates. This heat that's so intense that he doesn't have to touch anything to slice through it, and anything that is touched by it is disintegrated immediately. It takes all the moisture, all the water va vapor out of the entirety of Soul Society, completely, completely immobilizing anybody with ice powers, it's bonkers how powerful this thing is, and it's got to be because it's Yamamoto, who throughout the series has shown to be an incredibly credible threat without ever using his Bankai. He never used his Bankai against Aizen, meaning if it hadn't been for Aizen's shenanigans, he was confident he could win. But of course, Wonder Weiss came along and, and absorbed the flames and blah blah blah. This is to give us kind of a context for how strong Yawak is supposed to be. Uh, and it does technically kill Yawak. I say technically because of uh, the uh, Quincy bullshit. But technically it does kill him. So, Grandeur. Uh, by itself, it's like a 3. Maybe a 4. Uh, but if we're factoring in the techniques, and we are, it's a 7. Because uh, zombies uh, just just fire zombies. Efficacy, it's a 10. Um, nothing we've, uh, we've seen other than this has had such a wide scale of effect. Such a um, devastatingly powerful ability to the point that a character with godlike powers and strengths uh, feared it tremendously. We get a, a, a very good idea of how powerful it is by just looking at how powerful Yama is. And it's 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 up there. It's stated outright to be the strongest fire type Zanpakuto. And I believe it is one of the strongest Zanpakuto in the series. 10 out of 10. And thematically, it is a 9. And I didn't go into this because I wanted to talk about it for a second. Because Ryujin Jaka and Yamamoto don't seem to fit, you know? Ryujin Jaka is a, is a big fiery ball of rage and just like energy, aggression. It burns without remorse and it burns powerfully. Yamamoto is old and past his prime. He no longer has that fire to him, but when he was younger, he did. That was a, absolutely a reflection of him when he was younger. He was an angry, angry, powerful man. And as he's aged, he's managed to hide that rage a lot, a lot better. But that's concentrated that rage, and now he can direct it in a more direct kind of way, while simultaneously not letting go of the past and the things that he's done now. Now they haunt him, and now he can bring them back to haunt others. It's good. Thematically, it's very good. I like it a lot. That brings his total up to 26 out of a possible 30. Spoiler, it's not number one. Neither is Kinshara Butoden, but, uh, you know, Rose did good. It's, it's crazy, dude. Like, what are, like, these guys, the... Big banana men? Are you kidding me? What is, what's happening? It creates illusions that your brain and your body believe are real to the point that it actually causes damage to you. And it does this with, like, these crazy orchestral, like, sweeping motions from Rose that create elemental attacks and can make these yellow men attack you. And they're presumably undefeatable by anybody swinging at them. They're presumably not real things. That's cool and all. But all you have to do is not be able to hear, and you've beaten it. That's a huge, glaring weakness in this Bankai. When there's a character with a Shikai that can literally hypnotize all five senses permanently, you're telling me this character's Bankai has to have you with the ability to hear, and it cannot make- it, it will go away if it loses the ability to hear? Just silly putty, and you can do nothing. And yeah, that, had, that, that that does cripple a battle sense, but to, like, avoid the Bankai, like, absolutely, let's do it. And thematically, it's Music Man. For the Music Man, Rose. It fits, it's good, it's it's righteous. Rose Rose carries himself and conducts himself like a conductor. Uh, not, not of a train, but of an orchestra. He's very flamboyant and very obviously engrossed in his music. Music is his passion, music is his love, music is his life. And so, therefore, it would make sense that bon his Bankai would be a musical thing. So, Grandeur gets an 8 out of 10. It's good. Solid. I like it. Big yellow guys are weird, and they 
make me uncomfortable at night. Efficacy, it gets a, it gets a, it gets a six. Uh, I want to give it more because if you don't know not to plug, like not to plug your ears, you're probably not gonna figure it out. But it's anime, so he's gonna give away his ability. It's just, it's just the nature of the game. And then thematically, it's also an eight because it's good. It's solid. Twenty-two out of thirty. So. This is the one that I mentioned at the top that I might be a bit of a hypocrite about. This is Kokujo Tengen Myo, Komomoro's Bankai. And I, we're going to start with what I consider the first form. And that is this one, the one in the armor, the one that everyone really knows, and the one that gets its ass beat all the time. It is so cool to see this Bankai when it's revealed and it's rising over the building to strike at Kenpachi for the first time. It's wild! But then it's made very clear very quickly that it only exists to show off how strong Kenpachi is. That's the only reason for its existence. Because Kenpachi swats it away like it's nothing. When Ichigo beat Kenpachi in a fight technically earlier. Like, it, it, he shouldn't be that strong if this is a, another captain's Bankai and he just got done fighting another captain in Bankai. And then any damage the big armor takes, Komamura is, it, it has it reflected on him because this is a reflection of his soul and because of how close he is with his spirit. That's, that's an awful weakness. You've just made a bigger target for yourself. It really doesn't seem like it gives Komamura a power boost other than this thing is big. That's, that's not a power boost. That's... That is nothing but a weakness! If you're going against somebody who's already more powerful than you in your base form, and then you make something that is the same strength as your base form, but way bigger, you're gonna die. And he, he loses constantly. Until... Ba -ba -ba -ba, the next form, which we'll get to in a second. We're gonna rate this one first, though. Grandeur, 10 out of 10. Actually, we're gonna make it a 9 out of 10, because uh, the next one, I would argue, is better. Efficacy is a 3, because... does nothing. Thematically, though, it's actually pretty good. It's it's also it's a suit of armor that Komamura hides behind because he doesn't like to, you know, face things directly. He is a he's a character who I would say has old-fashioned southern anxiety, where he's just angry at things and wants to be left alone. It also goes into comparing him to other Bankai, or comparing his Bankai to other Bankai, just like you're comparing him to other characters. He's taller than everyone else. He's huge. He's massive. So it fits that his Bankai would be. 7 out of 10. That gives him a 19. It's pretty good. But then Dangai Joe shows up. Hey, man. This look pretty good, man. Where your clothes at? And that, that's a dang old guy Joe. We got Dangai Joe. Da Dangai Joe. And this is what I consider to be a second form. It is still Kokujo Tengen Myo Dangai Joe. But it, it even transforms Komamura into a into a human furry hybrid. He is completely invulnerable to harm, and as is his his Bankai at this point now, who is now also completely vul invulnerable to harm. It has the armor off, and it's this crazy mustachioed samurai thing with bright red skin. He literally cannot be killed in this form. It cannot be injured. It cannot be stopped. It's, it's, ob it's a 10 out of 10, you know, because the only fight we see it in it is quite literally stated because of what he had to give up in order to achieve this. It, it, it's it's unbeatable. It is unstoppable. This is the true, like, final level of a Bankai. However, it has an insane drawback. A wild drawback, which removes Komamura from contention for the rest of, I assume, however long Bleach goes. He's just gonna be... <coughs> he's just gonna be like a big wolf now. And I don't think he's ever gonna be able to use this again. And if that's the case, I mean, it's that's a hell of a drawback. Thematically, though, uh, it does actually evolve the theme of the first Bankai by shedding the armor, by shedding the thing that you're using to keep people away, by shedding your beast self, and by truly embracing this, this new form, this human form. You're now invulnerable to harm, but you have lost your heart in the process. But then he turns back into a beast, which completely eradicates that. Grandeur's a 10. It's just, it just is. Big, big shirtless red guy running around hitting things with a big sword. Ten. Sexy furry man who r wanders around with him. Uh, 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 yeah, ten. Efficacy's a nine. It would be a ten if it wasn't for the drawback, but the drawback is there. We gotta, we gotta look at it. We gotta see it. And thematically, it's a solid eight. So that brings his total up to a 27 out of a possible 30. I did mention I was a bit of a hypocrite.
Don't you fucking know who I am. <laughs> Senbon Sakura Kageyoshi is good. It's really good. I don't want it to be. I don't like Byakuya. He's such a prick. And I mean, that is his character. He's meant to be a prick. You're not meant to look at him and go, Ooh, he's such a nice guy. Oh boy, I wish he would kiss me. Uh, his Bankai is very good, though. Even if it is just more of a Shikai. At first glance, at least. When you really start dissecting the Bankai, it starts to make a lot more sense. And thematically, it fits him really well. Because his Shikai represents, and this is gonna go, this is literature professor mode, I'm very sorry, uh, his Shikai represents his legacy as a Kuchiki. That's why there's so few flower, like, petal blossom things, so few cherry blossoms, uh, and why it's just the one sword. When he drops it and he creates the hallway of blades that then turn into Simbon Sakura Kageyoshi, those blades are his family, those are the other Kuchikis watching him, and being a part of his life and he feels the weight he feels that responsibility of them and that's why they are towering over him uh that activation requirement though is never abused and i don't know why he has to fully drop his weapon it has to fall from his hands it has to then go into the ground the blades have to rise up and normally i would have no problem with the concept of them saying it happens very quickly but the fact that he just drops it indicates that there's at least like a second before the blade is completely gone. And a second in anime time is basically a year. Don't know why no one abuses that, but I, I, I guess they're just so enamored with his beautiful eyes. With lots of crazy wild techniques that he can just create because he's a master with his Bankai, this is a good Bankai! The grandeur for just the reveal alone not counting all of the crazy abilities would be a 7, but we have to bump it up because of how many of these things there are, and how cool they all look. It's, 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 it's nuts! It's crazy! Efficacy is a 9 out of 10, primarily because there are so many options, there are so many abilities. It's, it's really nonsense, and given to a character like Byakuya, who's a fan favorite and is never going to do bad, uh, at least not often, it makes it look even more powerful. It only doesn't get a 10, uh, because... Ichigo almost beat him, man, like, early on, too. I get it, is stronger, but if, if Ichigo can can do that, you, you got issues. Thematically, though, it's a 7 for the reasons I talked about earlier. That brings his total to a 24 out of a possible 30. You're gonna call me a hypocrite in the other, in the other direction on this one, but we've got Konjiki Ajisogi Jizu. Dr. Evil, I didn't spend six years of evil medical school to be called Mr. Thank which is the Bankai of Mayuri Kurotsuchi, and all of these are grouped under one, because they do not have different names, they, they are not completely different things, he has specifically gone in and altered them. That being said, uh, that makes, that makes it look fucking crazy, every time, every time you see it, you only see it in the same form a few times, uh, most of those are filler, too. And then you get these new, crazy, wild-looking, strange forms that all can do different things, and all look miserable. They look like they are dying. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to look at. It really is. And that makes it impressive. That makes it one of those ones that sticks very strongly in your mind. And when they appear, they win! They win mostly through just my Yuri hacks in general and the fact that like he can do shit like replace his organs that are being targeted by a magical ability that specifically targets organs and it makes them target his fake organs instead of his real organs. Like there's that. Like that's that's kind of bullshit and that's the kind of bullshit my Yuri can do. What was I saying? The 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 the, the weird baby things, however, aren't very good. They just kind of sit there and produce a thing. That is their goal. Um, the first form that we see it in produces poison smoke, like poison gas, and it can make blades out of its chest. The blades do nothing, ever. We never see it actually kill anything with those, they're just there for, like, threat. Uh, the poison gas does all of the work. And the other forms are just kind of meant as, as shields for Mayuri, anyway. Uh, very specific shields that also still have the poison, but still shields. And thematically, you know, I don't get it, if we're being honest. It's just a big, uh, baby thing, man. Like, I... Is it because he's a mad scientist? Like, that's just... That's just what they gave him, was a weird, gross baby thing. There is body horror to it, but not as much as Kisuke's. I... 
Is it an artificial being, and that is indicative of Mayuri replacing himself with artificial things, and also having an artificial daughter in the form of Nemu? Who knows? I don't, because it's it's good. It's good that the that the, these questions are raised, but it does nothing to make it concrete that this is why this exists. Nine out of grandeur, because you never know what you're gonna get. Seven on efficacy, because it's it does its job. It it wins fights, but mostly because of my Yuri. And thematically, we're still going to give it a 7, because, uh, I, I'm scared of my Yuri finding where I live, and he's a fictional character. So 23 out of a possible 30. Hajime Moshite! Here comes our black guy! Inma Kurogi is one of the most useless Bankai in the series. And I know people will argue about this one, whether it is or isn't useless, but there is, there is one small fact that I, I can present to you that will ruin this Bankai. It has walls, meaning all you have to do is run in a straight line, find the wall, and hit it. It does not screw with your senses, it, it completely removes them. Is, but your feelings are still there, like your, your sense of feeling is there. One, and, and you also have a second, like it takes a second for it to envelop you. You can run to the wall, and then just hit the wall until you're free. Or have Tosin accidentally hit the wall until you're free. It's a stationary object once it's formed, and then he has to undo it. But then on top of that, you also have to worry about AoE attacks. Like, that's all you have to do. And then suddenly, Tosin has nothing else. He has no techniques that go with this Bankai, he just stabs you. It just removes your senses and he stabs you. He's not more powerful inside of it, he just has the advantage because he's blind. And of course, thematically, it does fit Tosin really well. Not just because, you know, he's blind, so he makes you blind, but also because he's been blinded by his own darkness, his own inner darkness that he's got going on. It's put him in a bubble that has blinded him to the world around him and has prevented him from seeing the reality of things, figuratively speaking. And the fact that it blocks out spiritual pressure and everything. That's that's all that's all good. Uh Tosin Tosin's Tosin to, Tosin nah. It's not a good Bankai though, in terms of power. Um it's a big scary dome. Um I'm it it looks cool, but if I passed it on the highway, I wouldn't look twice at it. Well, I, I would look twice at it, I'd be like, Oh, look, is the circus in town? And somebody'd be like, No, Luke, shut up. Okay, alright, I got it. Grandeur's a six out of ten. It's a circus tent, it's a big black circus tent. Efficacy's a one! Bad! It's bad. But thematically, it's a good seven. It could be way worse. It's definitely not the worst on the list. It's 14 out of a possible 30. Shirafure Ichimanji, the Bankai of Ichibe. He calls it something different, but it's a Bankai. It's the same thing, different name. Uh, it's the name that existed before Bankai existed. And it is very, uh, the, uh, uh, hacks. He can change the name of anything to anything else. He can change the true name of anything to anything else. Meaning it takes on the properties of that thing. Not only is this shown to work on beings that were incredibly powerful, like Yavak. Not only is it shown to work on abilities, on, on beings that powerful, but it can reduce them to nothing. It reduces him to the power of an ant, and he's only saved because he's the main villain who needs the plot to save him. That alone is one thing. But then let's say I were to look at a dog. I have a dog right here, I'm looking at her, and I changed her name to Cat. Would that endow her with a cat's relative physical abilities as well as personality traits? If so, could I change the name of my hand to be Steel? And then my fist would be as hard as Steel. The, the endless creativity of this ability is quite possibly unmatched over the course of, of Leech by other than any, anything other than, uh, than Aizen Shikai, which is, which is still one of the, the most broken abilities ever introduced in any series ever. It doesn't look that neat, though. I mean, let, we can take that away from it. It's just like a white streak, white blur. That, uh, that's kind of it. Like, that's all we get. We don't get a lot. It's, it's a brush. It is. But it, it doesn't give us a whole lot to go with. And it really doesn't look like much over his Shikai, his awakened, uh, sword. And thematically, it's good. I mean, Ichi, Ichi Ichibe is, is quite literally just, tr like, names. That's his whole thing. That's his whole character. And so the true name of something being a thing that possesses a lot of power, that he can alter, makes sense. It fits. It's not spectacular, but it fits. Grandeur is a three, though. Grandeur is a three. It's just a brush thing-ish. 
Uh, it's a 10 out of 10 for efficacy, simply for the endless possibilities. And uh, we're going to give it a 6 on theme. We're going to give it a 6 on theme. It's a 19 out of 30. It's pretty good. All right, so the, the last three are all three that I debated even really putting on here. All for their own reasons. Uh, first of all, we have Coco Ganryo Riku. Chojiro Sasakabe's uh, Bankai, which is only revealed after his death. It's pretty cool looking. It's pretty effective. It manages to harm Yamamoto. It scratches his head. But it's not... We know nothing about Chojiro other than he's a Tiabu. He loves Westerners. He loves Englishmen. That's really all we know about him, and I don't know how we can tie that in to a giant crab of lightning that floats in the sky and strikes things with lightning bolts. I really don't know how. Which is why I de debated putting it on the list, but I imagine that thematically we could figure something out for, for Chojiro relatively simply to make it something that works thematically, especially because his Shikai is just like a sword. We don't- we never see it do anything. So it doesn't have to evolve on it. So we're going to give it a 4, just for the sake of it having something. In terms of grandeur, it's a giant crab lightning spider that shoots bolts of lightning at things. So it's a 6. It's got a simple design, but it's it's impressive. Like, it looks cool. Like, if I saw it, I'd be like, whoa, what's that? No, efficacy, it's also going to be a 6. Because if you manage to harm Yamamoto, you're definitely above the average at the very least. Even if it was only kind of a fluke. That brings the total for this particular one, which is a uh, pretty short entry, to six, bleh, 16 out of a possible 30. <laughs> Oh, okay, shit. Uh, Sakashima Yokoshima Hapo Fusagari, Hiroko Shinji's Bankai. This one I debated putting in here because, canonically, it does not appear in the manga. It only appears in a short story that exists uh, post-Bleach. It was animated, though, and it is in that short story, meaning it is canon. So we're gonna talk about it. Especially because it's actually pretty good. Like, it's pretty solid. Looking at it, it's nothing special. Like, its first reveal is, is not really anything to, you know, shake a, shake a tail feather at. But it is good. It looks weird enough for you to go, okay, that guy, there's something about that guy I don't want to fuck with. Don't know what that is, but I really don't want to fuck with it. He, he's, he's too flamboyant to be anything but dangerous. But also, it's a really good Bankai. It's, a, it's really solid. It really, really is. With a caveat, it is not good for one-on-one -on -one combat, and that is that is how most fights happen in Bleach. Most fights in this anime, or in the manga, are one-on-one -on -one duels. And so, this is not designed for that. This is designed for an army. This is designed for eradicating a population. This is designed not for a fight, but for a war. Which is really cool, we haven't seen a Bankai like that, really. Um, we've seen some that can be used for it but not really any that are explicitly for it. Shinji's is. And also, it manages to evolve his Shikai, which is not something I thought was going to be this, like, effective in doing. Because in the Shikai, it reverses everything. All of your perceptions are reversed. But now, the tables have turned and your friends and foes have been reversed. It puts a new little twist on the ability. And that's great! I like that! It's a little bit of a simple twist, and I'm not sure how, how twisting is Shinji, like, it reflects Shinji, I guess, because he's a conniving kind of, like, character, you know? <laughs> um, but I, I don't really get how that ties very, very well with Shinji as a personality, and that, that's a flaw in his Shikai, too. Um, I guess because he keeps people guessing, but that's not, it's never clearly stated. So Grandeur, we're going to give a 5, because, again, I can look at him and go... That guy, I don't want to fuck with that guy. Efficacy is a 9 out of 10 because it is a wartime Zanpakuto. It is not a fighting Zanpakuto. Uh, it would get a 10 otherwise if it could just be used to make you, like, kill yourself or something. But it is literally useless against a single person. And thematically, it's going to get a 7. Just because I like it. And I'm the one making the list. <laughs> that gives it a total of 21 out of a possible 30. After 19 actual real-time hours have passed, the winner is whoever received the most victory points. Now Finally, for the last one, we have Fushi no Kojo, Shuhei Hisagi's Bankai, and one of the weirdest in the series. I'm not going to talk about it for very long because this appeared in the same short story as um, Shinji's Bankai, but also has only appeared canonically in this short story. 
So we're not gonna go too far into it because it's it's kind of it's kind of weird anyway. They buff the hell out of out of uh, Hisagi in that short story. They make his Shikai way better. Uh, they make his Bankai basically Im make him make, make him immortal. They really just they like Hisagi. Uh, I think Taikubo's one of his favorite characters was Hisagi, one of his favorite side characters, and it shows in this short story. It anyway, um, it looks cool. It's good. It's neat. It's unique. It just goes up. Yeah, it just goes up, and I don't know what the activation requirements are, so maybe anybody who Hisagi looks at is affected by it, which is bananas overpowered if that's the case, because again, it does make Hisagi effectively unkillable uh, until they're also dead. It is a it is a mutually assured destruction kind of Zanpak Do, which still doesn't result in his destruction because he's a main character. It's really strong. And thematically being able to defeat an enemy without actually harming them fits Hisagi very well. It fits him super duper well because he doesn't like to cause pain. He, he he's a good combatant, but it's like the concept of karate, how it's supposed to be used just for self defense. Hisagi's like doing feng shui in the background, like beating the heck out of wooden sticks. But as soon as he sees blood, he passes out, and I'm slurring because I'm talking too quickly. I apologize. Grandeur's a five because it kind of the same as uh, as a uh, Shinji. You're gonna look at him and you go, "That's a, that's a guy I don't want to mess with," but I could probably mess with him. Efficacy's also a nine. And theme is also a 7. It's also a 21 out of 30. This actually, I didn't plan this. This is just how this worked out. So, just just believe me, because I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I'm not lying. <laughs> and with all of that said and done, this is the final score tally. Right here. Here they are. Here's everybody in order. I believe uh, Komamura is number 1 with his second form of, of, of Tengen. But Zanka no Tachi, if you want to disregard my personal bias, is is probably I think the number one. I th if if I'm remembering right, just just give it just give, just give it to Komamura. Give him a give him a win, please. Him him and Rinji need to join a club. Oh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, no, I don't have any any set set theme for any of the stuff I want to review. I just kind of do. I just kind of talk about things hope you're interested so uh, if you have anything at all you want me to look at please please leave a comment down below to let me know um if it's something i haven't heard of before it may take me a little longer to get to or if it's something i haven't seen before but i will and i'll absolutely do movies and, and tv shows everything so they'll all come up i just don't want to do the same thing like back to back i don't want it to be all movies or all tv shows and it's adhd thank you guys so much for watching again and again, I'm gonna try to upload more consistently, so here's hoping. Y'all have a great rest of your night.